So, thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 17567 in the name of Graham Day on behalf of the Bureau, setting out a timetable for the stage three consideration of the fuel poverty target definition and strategy Scotland Bill. Uh, I would encourage all members who wish to... No, sorry, anybody who wishes to speak against the motion should say so now. But could I ask Graham Day to move this motion? Move, presiding officer. Thank you very much. And no one has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 17567 be agreed. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. That's good. So, as we move on to the stage three proceedings uh, on the fuel poverty bill, members should have with them the bill as amended at stage two, the marshalled list, and the supplement to the marshalled list that contains manuscript amendment 99, uh, and the grouping of amendments. And just to remind members that the division bell will sound and proceedings will be suspended for five minutes for the first division of the afternoon. And the period of voting for the first division will be 30 seconds. However, after that, the voting period uh, will be one minute for the first division following a debate. Uh, members who wish to speak in a debate on any group of amendments should press their request to seat buttons as soon as possible after I call the group. And members should now refer to the marshal's list. Group one is fuel poverty target local authority areas. I call amendment one in the name of Graeme Simpson, grouped with the amendments as shown on the groupings. And at this point, I would also draw members' attention to the information in the groupings on the amendments in this group that preempt amendments in group two. So I call on Graeme Simpson. Thanks very much, presiding officer. Um, it's great to be able to kick off our debate on the proposed amendments to this bill. There's been a lot of cross-party working for stage three, so hopefully most of the amendments should pass without too much rancor. Um, I've got, uh, unfortunately for you, presiding officer, 10 amendments uh, in this group, and I'll try not to take too long, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cover them all. Uh, so, um, applying the 2040 target in each local authority area, but not but not to put the onus on councils was one of the key recommendations in the Local Government and Communities Committee uh, stage one report on the bill. And I was pleased that my amendments to give this measure effect were passed at stage two. It's very important that no part of the country should be left behind in the drive to meet the fuel poverty target at a national level. The Scottish Government supported the amendments uh, but have pointed to minor issues with the wording of stage two amendments I have worked uh, with the Minister on these amendments, uh, which make consequential and tidying up changes to ensure clarity and consistency throughout the bill, for which I'm grateful to the Minister for. These amendments will make absolutely clear that each of the three elements of the 2040 target apply in each local authority area, as well as nationwide. So among the households in each local authority area, no more than 5% can be in fuel poverty, no more than 1% in extreme fuel poverty, and the median fuel poverty gap should be no greater than £250 at 2015 prices before adjusting for inflation. The Minister mentioned at stage two that local authority statistics are not available quite as quickly as national ones, and I said I was happy to work with him on this. In considering the reporting cycles for data on fuel poverty, at local authority level, I've also brought forward an amendment which provides more time for reporting on whether the local authority area targets have been met following the end of 2040. And this is because combined data for three years is required from the Scottish House Condition Survey in order to provide sufficiently robust results for each council area. So it will be December 2043 before all local authority level data is available covering the three years after the target date, namely 2040 to 2042. The amendment to section nine reflects that. Let me just take each amendment uh, in turn, if I can, presiding officer. Amendment one sets out what this section does, namely making provisions for the 2040 fuel poverty targets. Uh, now that there is uh, also to be a second target, namely the local authority area one. Amendment two sets out the 2040 local authority area target in a manner which is consistent 
with the wording of the existing 2040 Scotland-wide target, and which also clarifies that it's only households in a local authority area which are under discussion. Amendment 72 puts the onus on Scottish ministers and not councils to meet the fuel poverty targets in each local authority area. Amendments 6, 7 and 8 are technical amendments that remove reference in sections 6, 1A, B and C to meeting the targets at local authority area uh, as this is now provided for instead by Amendment 9. And Amendment 9 inserts a new subsection to provide for the periodic reports to include information on the steps taken during the reporting period to meet the target at local authority area level, along with the progress made towards meeting it and the steps that are planned for the next reporting period. The effect of this is to bring together the currently dispersed references setting out these requirements in one place so as to make them more prominent and readily understandable. This route has been supported by the existing Homes Alliance, which has called for local authority targets to also reflect the periodic reporting on the other fuel poverty targets. Amendment 10 is consequential to Amendment 9. Amendment 11 inserts a new section after Section 9, setting out a requirement to report on the achievement of the 2040 target at local authority level by no later than 31st of December 2043. This reflects the fact that data on fuel poverty in each local authority area is only available based on a three-year average and will therefore only be available later uh, than the reporting date under Section 9. Amendment 13, I'm almost finished, is a consequential change to reflect that the Scotland-wide 2040 target is in subsection 1 of section 1 only. Amendment 14 is a consequential change to reflect the local authority area target is set out in section 11A and in order to allow it to be referred to by name. And amendments 20, 22 and 46 in the name of the minister are technical amendments to ensure terminology is consistent throughout the bill and we'll support them. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Simpson. And I call the Minister to speak to Amendment 20 and the other amendments in this group. Uh, thank you very much, Pres President Officer. Uh, be before I speak to my own amendments in the group, uh, let me turn to those of Mr Simpson. Uh, I'm happy that we've been able to work together on his amendments in relation to the local authority area target. Uh, they make sensible and necessary improvements to the current wording uh, around these commitments. Uh, turning to my own amendments, 20, 22 and 46, I'm bringing these forward in recognition of the fact that the fuel poverty strategy must take a holistic partnership approach to tackling fuel poverty if we are to be successful in achieving the bill's targets. Uh, this is particularly so in light of the introduction of the local authority area target, which will require us to work closely uh, with local authorities. Uh, they also acknowledge that the Scottish Government does not have control over all the drivers that can push households into fuel poverty, or for that matter, propel them out of it. Nonetheless, uh, we are committed to addressing all the drivers in our strategy. Uh, amendments uh, will therefore allow us where appropriate to set out actions in the strategy, not just that Scottish ministers must take, but which should be taken by others. Amendments two and three do similar things in respect of the steps needed to meet the 2040 target in local authority areas and periodic reporting. Uh, these measures will uh, enable us to produce the kind of comprehensive strategy that will be needed if we are to end fuel poverty in Scotland. Thank you very much. I call Alex Rowley to be followed by Lee MacArthur. Alex Rowley. The presiding officer, the amendments in this group are broadly fine. They are technical or clarify language and definition. However, as a result of Graham Simpson's amendments 6 to 10, Polly McNeill's stage 2 amendment on the need to include the cost of steps laid out in the periodic report is lost. We believe this is a key part of the transparency and scrutiny of the periodic report and for this reason, we will not be supporting Amendment 6 to 10. Liam MacArthur. 
Uh, thank you, President um, Officer. I just wanted to uh, voice my support for the amendments uh, brought forward by Graham Simpson. There were uh, concerns about uh, leveling too onerous a responsibility on local authorities, um, uh, but I, I think it's imperative that we see uh, consistent progress made across Scotland, across all local authority areas, towards um, the eradication of fuel poverty and extreme fuel poverty. And therefore, I, I very much welcome the uh, pragmatic approach that appears to be taken in these amendments. Thank you. Thank you. And can I ask Graeme Simpson if he wishes to um, wind up on this particular group? Um, I don't think there's anything else to say, presiding officer. Can I just confirm that you've moved Amendment 1? I will move Amendment 1. Thank you very much. Now, unusually, um, we're going to move on. That concludes the debate on Group 1, but we're going to move on to Group 2 uh, before having a, a vote, simply because the first amendment in Group 2 amends one of the amendments in Group 1. So I call Group 2, fuel 2032 Fuel Poverty Targets, and I call Amendment 1A, in the name of Alex Rowley, grouped with the amendments as shown in the groupings. And at this point, again, I would draw members' attention to the information uh, in the marshalled list, uh, in the grouping, sorry, uh, on the amendments in this grouping, which uh, are preempting, preempted by amendments in Group 1. And I call on Alec Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. I would move 1A and other amendments in my name. The bill is badly lacking ambition. Not only did the government limit the scope of this bill from a warm homes bill to a definition bill, preventing members from giving the measures required to eradicate a statutory footing, they have clung to a target that, in the words of Energy Action Scotland, condemns another generation to fuel poverty. Our proposal for a target of 2032 is realistic if it is accompanied by an ambitious plan. And we heard in committee that 2032 is supported by a broad range of stakeholders, including the existing Homes Alliance and Energy Action Scotland. Energy UK said it would focus minds. And that is the right way of looking at this. It is about the practicalities but it's also about political will. And the government are not coming close to doing everything they can to improve energy efficiency and reduce fuel poverty. Funding consistently falls short for what is required for a national infrastructure project. And that's what we need if we are going to tackle fuel poverty. Our approach would be very different from the government's. They claim that measures must be targeted only on those living in fuel poverty, but a sustainable and long-term approach to eradicating fuel poverty should mean effective behavioural change across Scotland, facilitating cooperatives, boosting people's wages and reducing the cost of living and improving energy efficiency across our housing stock because people move house and financial situations do change. The economic and health benefits across Scotland that would accompany such an approach uh, like this would be huge. Finally, and importantly, we want to give the Minister the best possible chance to eradicate fuel poverty, and we are not setting the government up to fail. We have introduced an amendment so that the target can be moved if independent expert opinion suggests that it cannot be reasonably met. The Parliament should support these amendments and back a radical plan to eradicate fuel poverty in Scotland as soon as is possible. Thank you. Thank you. I call Andy Whiteman to be followed by James Dornan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd just like to speak in this group to support Alex Rowley's uh, amendments. The committee, as members will know at stage one, made a recommendation that we should uh, stick with the 2040 uh, target. But amendments made at stage two have provided, amongst other things, enhanced scrutiny provisions and greater flexibility on the target. In particular, Alex Rowley's Amendment 70 uh, provides that the Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel can recommend a different fuel poverty target date. And therefore, agreeing to a more ambitious 2032 target is thus not as objectionable as it might have been uh, at stage one. If 2032 becomes unachievable, the panel will be able to recommend, if it sees fit, to extend the target beyond 2032, perhaps even back to 2040. As with the government's approach to climate change targets, when the evidence changes, so too should the response. Thank you, Presiding Officer. 
Thank you. And I call James Dornan to follow by Graeme Simpson. Uh, I want to speak against Alec Rowley's amendment. That the, as uh, Andy Whiteman just said, the committee did say at stage one that 2040 was a pragmatic target. Uh, and, you know, ideally, we, we'd all be wanting this so sorted in the next couple of years. But 2032 was seen to be totally unrealistic for, uh, by those who were going to have to do the work, who were going to have to make sure that it became reality. 2040 is a pragmatic target, as Andy Whiteman's already said. There's flexibility about it now, and I've got no doubts if the uh, technology comes into force that we'll be able to, we will hopefully we'll be able to move it forward. But I don't think that we should be setting ourselves up to fail, as happened in, uh, with a previous administration, with the best of intentions. Let's make sure that people know what the target is and then move on to uh, try and get it further forward. And Graham Simpson. As presiding officer, um, we're actually uh, go going over a debate that we had extensively at stage two here. Um, nothing has really changed. Uh, the, the, the committee took the view, um, and it wasn't, e it wasn't an easy decision, but we took the view that 2040 was the right date. 2032 uh, was possibly too ambitious, so nothing has really changed from that position. Um, this just feels like a, a bit of a rerun, frankly, and I think the result will be the same. And Minister. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, Mr Simpson is uh, absolutely right. This is a debate uh, that we had uh, at great length during stage two, uh, and I'm disappointed that these amendments have been brought back again, uh, despite being clearly defeated and contrary to the committee's recommendations at stage one. Uh, recommendations that Mr Rowley supported at that stage and I remain strongly opposed uh, to these amendments. Uh, during the stage one committee uh, debate the, it was accepted that it was better to have realistic and achievable targets all involved could work towards as long as the government brought forward amendments to include interim targets on the face of the bill which we have done. At stage two we debated this further uh, visiting all the arguments we had before and coming to the conclusion that including interim targets would help us to demonstrate progress. We introduced a 2030 interim target at stage two and Graham Simpson's amendment four will introduce a further 2035 target which I fully support. I therefore remain strongly opposed to Mr Rowley's amendments in this group. We have been through all of the arguments before but I will set them out again. Uh, we do not have powers over all of the drivers of fuel poverty, particularly the prices of energy. Therefore, our action has to be through what we can do. And that is why we are tackling fuel poverty by going for transformational change for homes through energy efficient measures. That relies on technologies, some of which are still in development, a skilled workforce and local companies to take this forward. The target date has been agreed by those partners who will bring about this change. The businesses taking forward the work, COSLA, and of course those who own homes, owner occupiers, private landlords and RSLs. These sectors do not want a target that is setting up everyone to fail. They want to work towards a target that we can achieve. And none of the partners who actually have to deliver the 2040 targets including COSLA, who have written multiple times to the Local Government and Community Committee during stage one with their concerns, agrees with these amendments. There are clear risks to accelerating the time frame, including losing the economic opportunities to develop skills and supply chains across Scotland that could potentially support 4,000 jobs because only larger businesses from out with Scotland are ready to match an accelerated pace. In addition, if demand exceeds supply, costs could escalate, potentially leading to increased rents and further pressure on public finances. It also clearly risks alienating the public by speeding up the pace of regulation, enforcement and mandatory action by 2024. I have not yet seen an alternative to our comprehensive energy efficient Scotland route map, which commits us to a sensible phased approach to maximise the take up of energy efficiency improvements voluntarily up to 2030 with mandatory action to follow. And as I've stated before, 
Uh, we, of course, want to go further. I want to go further. I want to go faster if it's possible, which was, is why we are currently consulting on the impact of speeding up the programme. However, we must not risk our credibility by setting unrealistic expectations or take actions that lead to unnecessary costs for people and for the public finances. We must have a realistic and achievable starting point for the fuel poverty target that is within our grasp and can be strived for. We have already debated the risks and the issues, and I urge the Parliament to yet again reject these amendments, presiding officer. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call on Alec Rowley to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 1A. I thank you, presiding officer. As the Mr Stewart said, the, the Tory members and the SNP members at stage two did come together to, to block uh, any attempt to, to be a bit more ambitious with this target. But I had hoped that the, the minister would have looked again and that many of his colleagues on his benches would have looked again. You know, the, the, this parliament was established in 1999 and early in the life of that parliament, we brought in a bill to eradicate fuel poverty by 2016. Today, today, we're talking about getting fuel poverty down to 5% by 2040. I think, as I said previously, I will be in my 70s when we reach that target, if we reach that target, because the doom and gloom would suggest that we cannot. But there are a few myths that the minister raised. For example, he says this is all down to technology. That is simply not the case. I have written to him about housing in, in Balingary in Fife, in Lahore in Fife, where it's described as expensive to treat and expensive to put in place the, uh, the, the efficiency measures, energy efficiency measures. So the lack of budget is what's causing those people to be living in fuel poverty the lack of budget and the lack of ambition. So it's not simply about technologies. The minister says it's about a skilled workforce. Why are we not being more ambitious to tackle fuel poverty and have a skilled workforce in place that could get the jobs that can ensure that people live in warmer houses? So, so, so I, would simply say, I would simply say to you that as I said previously, we have covered the fact by another amendment that if, if we reach or look like we're going to reach 2032 and we're not reaching then the, the target, then, then we could shift the target. But I would rather be ambitious for Scotland, ambitious and say that nobody in Scotland should be living in fuel poverty and it is the Tory MSPs and the M SNP MSPs that lack ambition, lack ambition uh, and that's why people will continue to be in fuel poverty. I, I would move. <laughs> Thank you Mr Rowley. And the question is that Amendment 1A be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. Now, this is the first division of the afternoon, so we're going to suspend for five minutes while I call the members to the chamber. A short suspension of five minutes.
Thank you very much, colleagues. That is our short suspension over. Parliament resumes. And the question is that Amendment 1A be agreed to. Uh, and this will be a 30-second division. So press your buttons now. Amendment 1A. And members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 1A in the name of Alec Rowley is yes 25, no 85. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, Graham Simpson to press or withdraw amendment 1. Press. That is pressed. The question is that amendment 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call amendment 65 in the name of Alec Rowley? Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. Not move. I call Amendment 2 in the name of Graeme Simpson, uh, already debated, and I remind members that if Amendment 2 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 66. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Move. That is moved. The question is that... Oh, no, it's not, sorry. Yes, I call Amendment 2A. Bear with me, it's complicated today. I call Amendment 2A in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move, President. That is not moved. Uh, so, Graeme Simpson, the question is, therefore, that Amendment 2 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Amendment 66 is valid. Yes. So, we're going to... so, we now move to Group 3, modification of the 2040 target. I call Amendment 67 in the name of Alec Rowley, grouped with Amendment 60, 68, 69 and 70. Alec Rowley to move Amendment 67 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to move Amendment 67 and other amendments in my name. Uh, as mentioned, I brought forward amendments at Stage 2 to allow the target to be moved if independent expert opinion suggested that it cannot be reasonably met. We want this Parliament to work together to have the best possible chance of eradicating fuel poverty at the earliest opportunity. The target is simply a means to an end. Unfortunately, the government still chose to stick with their target of 2040. If the statutory advisory panel feel that the target should be brought forward, we hope they feel able to move it and give the government the guidance they need to achieve that target. I move. Thank you. And I call the Minister. No one else wishes to speak. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. Um, I agreed at stage two the, that a statutory Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel should have the power to make recommendations that would allow Parliament to revisit the target date, but only by pushing it back. I'm pleased that Mr Rowley and I have been able to work together on these amendments, which now allow Ministers the flexibility uh, to modify the date both backwards and forwards. They also ensure that reporting deadlines can be adjusted accordingly if the 2040 target date for either the local authority target or the national target is changed. And I would urge members to support these amendments. Does Mr Rowley wish to add anything? No, thanks. Thank you very much. The question therefore is that Amendment 67 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 68 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move or not move? President officer. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 68 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 69. Alec Rowley to move. Move, President officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 70. Alec Rowley to move. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 70 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And we turn to Group 4, Interim Fuel Poverty Target. I call Amendment 3 in the name of Graeme Simpson, grouped with Amendments 4 and 12, and Graeme Simpson to move Amendment 3 and to speak to all the amendments in the group. Thank you. I'll move Amendment 3, Presiding Officer. Uh, we've got three amendments in this group. They're all in my name. Um, I was pleased that the Government decided at Stage 2 
to act on the recommendations of the Local Government and Communities Committee and put forward an amendment to put an interim target for 2030 on the face of the bill. Now, during stage two, there was discussion on having further milestones to keep things on track, and I've worked with the government on these amendments to address that. The fuel poverty strategy included that the overall fuel poverty rate will be less than 20% by 2030, and the median household fuel poverty gap would be no more than 450 pounds. A Scottish Government amendment at stage two improved the bill so that in the year 2030, no more than 15% of households uh, would be in fuel poverty, no more than 5% would be in extreme fuel poverty, and the median fuel poverty gap would be no more than 350 pounds, taking into account changes in the value of money. My amendments to section 1A are in line with that, and set a further interim target to be introduced for 2035. So there you've got um, one target of 2030 and an extra one at 2035. So this target, this second target, would be that no more than 10% of households in Scotland are in fuel poverty, no more than 3% are in, in extreme fuel poverty, and that the median fuel poverty gap is no more than 300 pounds at 2015 prices. So these figures are based on a straightforward linear progression from the 2030 interim target to the 2040 end target. And I believe this would ensure that attention continues to be focused on reducing fuel poverty and crucially maintaining the momentum towards achieving that 2040 target. My amendment to section 9A is a technical one in recognition of the fact that although the bill will include interim targets, that wording isn't used. As all of the targets are classified together as fuel poverty targets, the panel will already be considering progress made towards meeting them. Amendment three simply expands the section of the bill to include more than one interim target. The interim targets will be classified as fuel poverty targets under the existing definition in section 12A Therefore, the periodic reporting duties and duties about the strategy will apply to this new interim target, just as they apply to the 2030 target. Amendment 4 adds an additional interim target for 2035 at section 1A, um, and I've gone over already what that would do. The purpose of the amendment is to ensure that the momentum is maintained, as I've already said. Amendment 12 removes reference to interim targets on the basis that interim targets have been provided for, but the label of interim targets has not been used, as this new interim target is already covered by reference to fuel poverty targets. Apologies that some of that was quite technical, but that is the, the, the nature of the bill, presiding officer, just has to be that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Simpson. Uh, no other member wishes to contribute, therefore the Minister. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, I'm pleased that Mr. Simpson and I have been able to come to agreement on these amendments, which bring forward an additional interim target, and I can confirm my support. Thank you very much. Does Mr. Simpson wish to add anything? Well, the Chamber will be pleased to know I have nothing further to add. <laughs> okay. The question is, therefore, that Amendment 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendment 71 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 1A. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. That is not moved. I call Amendment 4 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated. Graeme Simpson to move? Move. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And we turn now to Group 5, Enhanced Heating. Can I call Amendment 15 in the name of Jackie Bailey, grouped with Amendments 16 and 17, Jackie Bailey to move Amendment 15 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I arrive to move, to, um, move Amendment 15 and speak to all the other amendments in the group which are in my name. Could I declare an interest as the Honorary Vice President of Energy Action Scotland and thank them and other organisations for their help with Stage 2 amendments. Section 2 of the Bill sets out two heating regimes, the standard heating regime and an enhanced heating regime. As you would expect, the enhanced heating regime has a higher temperature and longer heating time than the standard heating regime. 
under Section 2, Paragraph 4, Scottish ministers can make regulations which specify the types of household where enhanced heating is appropriate. So specified households get enhanced heating and others get standard heating. At stage two, I put forward a series of amendments which suggested that households with people of pensionable age or children under five should be entitled to the enhanced heating regime. It is a matter of regret that I wasn't able to persuade the committee and indeed not able at that stage to persuade the Scottish Government, despite a wealth of support from experts and organisations involved in the field of tackling fuel poverty. However, I don't give up easily. I'm pleased to say that I have managed to persuade the Minister that there is a need to look at this issue and I'm glad that we've been able to come to a compromise. He's smiling, presiding officer. It's the first time he's probably enjoyed compromising with me. I think we would all agree that the introduction of a flexible range <laughs> of a flexible range of enhanced heating regimes is very important to the proper measurement of fuel poverty. We know certain groups are more at risk of fuel poverty because they require higher temperatures for longer, meaning that they spend more on fuel costs. If we don't reflect this in our measurement of fuel poverty, we run the risk of letting people slip through the net. We would fail to capture the fact that vulnerable groups are being faced with the choice of being able to heat their homes or being left without enough money to maintain an acceptable standard of living. To address this, the purpose behind these three amendments is to introduce two additional enhanced heating regimes to provide a more accurate picture of fuel poverty. These two additional regimes are for a higher temperature, but for standard hours, and a standard temperature, but for longer hours. Instead of having one single enhanced heating regime, which applies both higher temperatures and longer hours of heating to a household, there would also be the option to apply only either higher temperatures or longer hours. Essentially, there could be some households which need longer heating hours, but not higher temperatures or vice versa. This will enable a more flexible range of enhanced heating regimes to be applied, which can be better tailored to the needs of different household types. I would therefore urge the Chamber to make a difference to support the three amendments in this group. Thank you. I call Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. I just wanted to welcome the, the perseverance of, of Jackie Bailey. Um, she was right through stage two. Um, she had a fair go at uh, bringing forward uh, amendments that the Minister was resisting. But I think the flexibility uh, that these amendments deliver through the Bill is very much welcome. We will support the amendments. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call the Minister. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I've got a funny feeling that my face was probably as uh, bright a red as Jackie Bailey's jacket there. Uh, when she was talking about the compromising situation. Um, as uh, Jackie Bailey has outlined, these amendments uh, enable uh, a more flexible range of enhanced heating regimes to be applied, uh, which can be better tailored to the needs of different household types. Uh, Ms Bailey has taken a close interest in the bill from its introduction uh, and in particular uh, in relation to our uh, enhanced heating regime and has advocated for change. I'm pleased that we have been able to work together to agree this new approach uh, and I'm happy to support her amendments. Thank you very much. Does Ms Bailey wish to add anything to wind up? Nothing to add. Thank you very much. The question therefore is that Amendment 15 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 16 in the name of Jackie Bailey. Jackie Bailey to move. Moved. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 16 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call Amendment 17 in the name of Jackie Bailey. Jackie Bailey to move. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 17 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. We turn now to Group 6, Meaning of Fuel, fuel Poverty, Benefits Received for a Care Need or Disability. Can I call Amendment 18 in the name of the Minister? grouped with Amendment 19 and the Minister to move Amendment 18 and to speak to both amendments. Uh, thank you, President Officer. At uh, stage two, uh, an amendment from Jackie Bailey was passed which required that benefits received for a care need or disability are deducted from incomes at the second part of the fuel poverty definition when determining if the household has enough remaining money to maintain an acceptable standard of living. Uh, I was happy to support this change as it will result in a fairer comparison to the minimum income standard for these households. Amendments 18 and 19 are subsequent tidying amendments. 
18 will mean that all of the relevant bene benefits, including severe disablement allowance, will be deducted from incomes, and 19 will make sure that benefits received for a, a disability or care need are also de deducted from incomes as part of the definition of extreme fuel poverty. I therefore ask members to support these amendments, and I move Amendment 18. Thank you. And I don't believe any member wishes to add anything. Therefore, the question is that Amendment 18 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendment 19 in the name of the Minister? Minister to move. Uh, move, President Officer. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 19 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendment 20, already debated? Minister to move formally. Uh, moved, President Thank officer. you very much. The question is that Amendment 20 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And we turn to Group 7, Strategy and Periodic Reports, Approach to Addressing the Drivers of Fuel Poverty and Definition of Those Drivers. Can I call Amendment 21 in the name of Andy Whiteman, grouped with the amendments as shown in the groupings. Andy Whiteman to move Amendment 21 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I move Amendment 21. Uh, this amendment simply adds an additional paragraph in Section 3.2 to require that the fuel poverty strategy sets out the approach that Scottish ministers will take to tackle all four drivers of fuel poverty to ensure that the fuel poverty targets are met. Uh, I'm very glad we actually ended up getting the four drivers of fuel poverty uh, in the bill and a number of amendments being debated here today uh, are, are uh, adjustments uh, to that. Amendment 33 is consequential to Amendment 21 and ties the four drivers uh, in this amendment to the definition provided in Section 9 uh, of the bill. Claudia Beamish's uh, Amendment 7 to 8 is useful, uh, I think, in spelling out clearly the requirement to improve en energy efficiency uh, across the board, uh, and we will be uh, supporting that. For Amendments 42, 43 and the consequential 47, this would add a duty to report on the extent to which the, fuel drivers, the four drivers of fuel poverty uh, have been addressed in each periodic report uh, under Section 6. And I want to particularly draw attention to Alex Rowley's Amendment 97 that restates the four drivers of fuel poverty uh, in more accurate uh, terms. Uh, specifically, uh, in the uh, Amendment um, 97, uh, he talks about low net adjusted household incomes. And it was frequently stated by members at stage one that income is not one of the drivers that the Scottish Government nor the Parliament has any control over. Yet, of course, the relevant metric for the purposes of measuring fuel poverty is not gross uh, incomes, uh, but net incomes after housing costs, after childcare, uh, after fuel costs. And this Parliament does, or should indeed, do more perhaps to influence house prices and rents uh, through fiscal measures and housing tenure reform. We do influence childcare and of course we control income tax, which determines how much income folk have to start with. Alec Burnett's uh, Amendment 77, 81 and 85 we won't be supporting, but we will be supporting Alex Burnett's Amendment 83, which picks up on my amendments to require that the periodic reporting includes progress that's been made in terms of energy uh, efficiency. Um, I have nothing more to add, Presiding Officer, at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Whiteman. I call Jackie Bailey to speak to Amendment 74 and the other amendments in this group. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I wish to speak only briefly to Amendments 74, 75 and 76. Um, I think we would all agree that a new definition and target are only useful if they lead to meaningful action. I think everyone accepts that those who require an enhanced heating regime are more at risk of fuel poverty because of the increased costs they face to sufficiently heat their homes. We must understand who these people are, but also reach them with the assistance required to lift them out of fuel poverty. That could be through financial support or help to make their homes more energy efficient. These amendments enable ministers to set out their approach to identify and support those more at risk of fuel poverty because they require an enhanced heating regime. And I hope members will support them. Thank you. And can I call the minister to speak to Amendment 23 and the other amendments in this group? Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the fuel poverty strategy uh, will be vital in delivering the ambition set out in this bill. Uh, and there have been a number of amendments to this section of the bill throughout the process that I want to address in turn. Um, I welcome and support Andy Whiteman's amendments to make it clear that the final fuel poverty strategy will set out the approach we will take on all four drivers of fuel poverty, which is the approach we took in the draft fuel poverty strategy. 
uh, the, there's absolutely no doubt that how we use energy in the home uh, is important. Uh, this is a large part of what our award-winning advice service Home Energy Scotland does, uh, but I do want to note it does not contribute towards measuring progress against the fuel poverty targets within this bill. These are based on the cost of heating homes to the temperatures set out in section two. Uh, I want to move on to amendments 74, 75 and 76 concerning enhanced heating. I have been working with Ms Bailey in relation to the enhanced heating regime and acknowledge her championing of this issue. I would like to reassure her that we are absolutely committed to identifying in the strategy what we will do to help those who are in fuel poverty as a result of being a household for which enhanced heating is appropriate. However, I feel these amendments are unnecessary and do not need to be in primary legislation. And I hope that my commitment reassures Ms Bailey on this matter and I would urge her not to press her amendment. Uh, moving on to my amendments 23 uh, to 28. Uh, these are largely technical in nature. At stage two, I gave my support to Alexander Burnett's amendment agreeing that the fuel poverty strategy should set out our approach to identifying properties with low energy efficiency ratings. At the time, I noted that we were happy to support this, but we would need to revisit this at stage three. The amendments I've put together uh, strengthen the bill by making it clear that the strategy will set out the approach we actually intend to take to identifying homes with low energy efficiency rather than what is currently in the bill, which is the approach that we could take. Uh, they also make it clear it is about identifying homes where the households are fuel poor, which is obviously the focus of the bill and the strategy. Amendment 27 ensures that the wording is in line with the energy efficient Scotland approach. The other amendments are technical and tidying amendments. Uh, I would like to turn next to Mr Burnett's amendments 81, 83 and 85. Uh, in relation to amendments 81 and 85, uh, these are unnecessary as they are already dealt with by amendments 42 and 43 in the name of Andy Whiteman which are stronger as they require Scottish ministers to set out the steps that have been taken uh, and will be taken on all four drivers of fuel poverty uh, and not just one. For that reason, I would urge Mr Burnett not to press amendments 81 and 85 uh, and to instead support those of Andy Whiteman. Uh, as amendment 83 uh, does something slightly different in asking uh, for the progress that has been made, I'm more than can, happy to support it. I would also urge Mr Burnett not to press Amendment 77 on the basis that it is unnecessary. The section he is amending is already explicitly building on the approach that is referred to in Section 22A, which says that this is the approach we will be taking to ensure that the fuel poverty targets are met. Amendments 78 uh, from Claudia Beamish and 79 and 87 from Polly McNeil unnecessarily add in a long list of tenures and then require specific financial incentives for their owners to be created, whether they are in fuel poverty or not. The key purpose of the bill is to tackle fuel poverty, yet nowhere in these amendments is there a single mention of fuel poverty. The wider issues of home energy efficiency are already being addressed elsewhere, and these amendments would detract from the core purpose of the bill while adding nothing of benefit. Furthermore, there are a number of potential issues with the drafting of Amendment 78 in particular, and the other amendments are contingent on it. The list of housing tenures is incomplete, uh, with some private tenancies not covered, for example, tenancies under agricultural and crofting legislation. And whilst the amendment has provided a power for ministers to expand the list by regulations, until just this morning, this power was not going to be subject to parliamentary procedure. Although that has now been rectified uh, by a manuscript amendment today, there are still problems with Amendment 78 which have not been addressed. For example, the power does not allow tenancy types to be removed if they are no longer relevant. Uh, for all of these reasons, I cannot support these amendments. However, I've always made it clear that I'm determined that the fuel poverty strategy 
will set out how we intend to help fuel poor households in all types and all tenures of housing and using all means available to support people. And the bill was amend amended at stage two to require the strategy to set out how we intend to remove poor energy efficiency as a driver of fuel poverty. That means removing it for all households, regardless of tenancy type, in order to meet the targets. I hope that provides reassurance to members and I would ask Ms McNeill and Ms Beamish not to press Amendments 78, 79 and 87, which are flawed, uh, as well as not pressing the newly lodged Amendment 99. Uh, there have been many references uh, to the four drivers of fuel poverty today and during the earlier stages of this bill. All of them are important. And during stage two, Alec Riley brought forward an amendment establishing the Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel by statute and requiring it to report on the extent to which these drivers are being addressed. Uh, we have worked closely uh, with Mr Riley on his technical amendment 97, uh, wh which clarifies what the four drivers of fuel pover poverty are. These amendments also address concerns which Mr Whiteman has uh, raised, and I hope that we can now all support this amendment, which more accurately reflects what the drivers of fuel poverty are. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call Claudia Beamish to speak to Amendment 78 and the other amendments in this group. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendment 78, um, uh, already um, re uh, discussed by the Minister, looks to ensure that Ministers give appropriate consideration to a number of different housing tenures when preparing the fuel poverty strategy. And it's not, I would stress, exclusive. Um, I welcome Andy Whiteman's support for the amendment. And Amendment 99 uh, now ensures these regulations are subject to affirmative uh, procedure, and I thank the legislation team for dealing with that um, uh, at, at, the latest, at, the at this late hour, and also for the presiding officer for accepting that amendment. Thank you. Fuel poverty can affect people's lives regardless of their housing arrangements, and members can see the list of housing types in the amendment, owner-occupied private tenancies, local authority tenancies, social housing, multi-occupancies, Scottish secure tenancies, and I stress, um, contrary to what the minister said, agricultural tenancies, uh, multiple types, and it allows ministers, yes, I'll just finish the sentence, allows ministers to prescribe other types in regulation. Yes. Um, Presiding officer, um, the list uh, does not include agricultural and crofting tenancies uh, and the, the amendment is flawed. I know that Ms Beamish has tried to deal with some aspects uh, and change that amendment uh, using a manuscript uh, amendment today, but uh, I think it's fair to say uh, that missing out those tenancies uh, makes that amendment still flawed. Claudia Beamish. I, I uh, through the presiding officer, actually I have not changed this amendment today. I have simply added Amendment 99 as an affirmative, um, uh, so that it's done by affirmative, it, this is the case, um, by affirmative, uh, uh, the way of doing things. And, uh, and I can actually read out um, that it is uh, in relation to the 1991 Act tenancy within the meaning of the Agricultural Holdings Act, Scotland 2003. So that is within the amendment which has not been changed today. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll progress with what I'm saying. Each of these designations has their own unique challenges that should be addressed, and those living in each of these types have differences in, um, in income and the motivations or the, and, or the necessities of living there. Uh, some of these designations have higher and lower proportions living in fuel poverty, I acknowledge this. And Scottish Labour believes that we should prioritise support at those living in fuel poverty, but limiting action to only those in direct fuel poverty uh, would be short-sighted of this government. We should be looking for a long-term and sustainable solution, as many expected from the Warm Homes Bill commitment made by this government, which is also in Scottish Labour's manifesto. This bill is in much narrower in scope, but ultimately we need to bring all housing stop, stock up to standard and people move houses and encounter changing circumstances. This bill uh, should be preventive and not just reactionary. For example, the, the private sector tenants 
can often face reluctance from landlords to make energy efficiency improvements. Those in multi-occupancies can face difficulties in shared cost improvements, which is a complex issue as well. And agricultural tenancies, as I have seen uh, for, with my own eyes, can often be older rural buildings and landlord conflicts can arise. I had a similar amendment, um, though more narrow in scope in the last parliament, and it was stressed by the then minister that the private rented um, accommodation would be addressed through uh, the Fuel Poverty um, Forum and, and action groups, but this hasn't happened. The government has rightly committed to a target of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045 and, uh, and accepted that this will take a step up in policy action. And I think it's important that in the relation to the climate emergency, there are co-benefits of this bill in relation to climate change and also, need I say, of course, in addressing physical and, and mental health and well-being. The UN right to a home must surely mean a warm home here in Scotland, and any government must oblige those with the responsibility that they have to do so, to provide this. And in this climate emergency, this amendment uh, should also... It also focuses on a just transition at its core, in that it aims to support those who can't necessarily afford to take actions as, un as individuals in relation to fuel poverty, or indeed aren't actually able to because of the types of accommodation they're living in and they don't have the power to do so. I would also argue that in many cases the responsibility lies elsewhere, not with the tenant, but with the landlord. I hope the government, even at this late stage, will consider this amendment uh, and, uh, and I look forward to hearing any further comments from the Minister. Thank you. Although the Minister will not have another chance to reply in this. Uh, Alexander Burnett to speak to Amendment 77 and other amendments in this group. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I can note members to my register of interest regarding construction and property management. Uh, I will be looking to move Amendments 77 and 83 today. Uh, but I will not be looking to move amendments 81 and 85 uh, as we feel that Andy Whiteman's amendments help adequately tackle the drivers of fuel poverty uh, of which the Scottish Conservatives are in agreement with. Now, amendments 77 and 83 both seek to hold the government to account by ensuring that low levels of energy efficiency are being addressed. Amendment 77 seeks to help lift residents out of fuel poverty within target remits that must be laid out by the government. This will ensure that this or any future Scottish Government must stick to reducing fuel poverty in a targeted timeline. Amendment 83 builds on Amendment 77 and looks to ensure that when the Scottish Government is reporting on hitting targets or reducing fuel poverty, that they look to specifically analyse progress on removing low levels of energy efficiency. Now, energy efficiency is a driver of fuel poverty and therefore it is important that this amendment is included in this bill to ensure that any Scottish Government reports on the progress of improving energy efficiency in homes across Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Pauline McNeill to speak to Amendment 79 and the other amendments in this group. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Speaking to Amendments 79 and 87 and other amendments in the group, in particular Amendment 21 in the name of Andy Whiteman, which I think is a very important amendment uh, amendment 78 in the name of Claudia Beamish and Amendment uh, 97 in the name of Alex Riley. Uh, on Amendment 79, um, ministers must use the strategy to set out the financial and fiscal incentives available to those living in each of the housing tenures. The decision that the government took to bring forward a full poverty bill and not a warm homes bill is illustrative of the government's narrow approach in how we eradicate fuel poverty. Uh, whilst it might not be desirable, it's certainly a competent amendment. Uh, we suggest that um, there is a, should be a much wider focus on energy efficiency and fuel poverty, given the drivers are mentioned by Claudia Beamish, fuel poverty, energy efficiency and climate change. If we don't address it in this bill, then we certainly should have to be addressing it somewhere else, and I don't see where that would be. Offering the widest level of support to groups of people uh, and across all tenures in all housing stock, laying out financial incentives that are available um, for people to take up that option. Amendment 87 um, calls for a periodic report to include that any review that should be a review of the effectiveness of financial and fiscal incentives laid out in the strategy. 
Home Energy Scotland reports that 845 households applied for loans to install energy efficiency measures, but we don't really know the effectiveness of these actions. And it may well be if there was better advertising done, then more people would apply for those uh, loans to install energy efficiency options. Uh, the emphasis on loans uh, is there, but there all needs, also needs to be a look at other incentives. According to the Consumers Futures Trust, the option preferred by homeowners by some margin is a one-off rebate of council tax in the year following installation. If we do not address the question of how we get more people to take their own measures in making, uh, using less fuel and making fuel more efficient, then we have to do it somewhere that seems the appropriate place to do it. It is an imperative that we approach fuel poverty as a warm, a warm homes issue as well as looking at ways that we can have more fuel efficient issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. McNeill. And I call Alec Rowley to speak to Amendment 97 and the other amendments. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Uh, in support of 97, we also support the other amendments in this group, most of which are broadly technical amendments. I would want to thank the government for their support and in, in, in working on these. Uh, even though there are some areas of disagreement in this bill, there has also been some productive joint working, uh, and that I would want to put on record. Uh, that's um, because the Minister Kevin Stewart has had very much an open door approach. Uh, he says that he wants to work with parties in terms of the strategy, and I look forward to that. Thank you very much, Mr Rowley. I call Annabel Ewing to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Annabel Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I rise to speak against Amendments 78 and 99 in the name of Claudia Beamish and Amendments 79 and 87 in the name of Pauline McNeil. Uh, I would uh, mention that similar proposals were uh, put forward at Stage 2 but did not gain traction. And for my part, I find the amendments somewhat confusing. Uh, we've heard that Amendment 78 lists a whole series of tenures, but as is the danger of such an approach, it does not capture all tenancies. I uh, understand, for example, that tenancies under the Crofters Scotland Act 1993 would not be covered, uh, as the Minister has uh, uh, outlined. Uh, but the key point of the bill is that it does cover all households, no matter the tenure or the tenancy, and that is the scope of the bill as it currently stands. So therefore, Amendment 78 it is not necessary uh, and indeed uh, risks uh, confusion. Uh, turning to uh, Amendment 79 and, and sorry, Amendment 99 uh, is the manuscript amendment which would uh, facilitate a process uh, should Amendment 78 be uh, ag agreed to. But I would argue, as I say, that Amendment 78 is confusing uh, and is not in keeping with the spirit of the bill. And therefore, I would also uh, suggest that we uh, amend, uh, reject Amendment 99. Turning to Amendment 79 and 87. Uh, the amendments also do not reflect the fundamental tenet of the bill, which is that those who are in most in need are, in fact, to be targeted. Rather, these amendments would not be limited to those households defined to be in fuel poverty, but would cover all properties in the categories that uh, Claudia Beamish set forth. Uh, and hence, again, that amendment, those amendments would not be in keeping with the, the tenets of the bill, uh, which, of course, presiding officer, is the fuel uh, poverty bill and not some other uh, bill, which perhaps was the approach uh, intended by the, the members concerned. So I would suggest, therefore, that if the uh, members do insist on pressing these uh, amendments, that they are rejected because they are confusing. Do not add anything to the bill that we are currently looking at uh, and, uh, indeed, are not in keeping with the fundamental tenets of this bill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Ms. Ewing. And I call Graeme Simpson. As presiding officer, um, we'll be supporting Andy Whiteman's amendments. Um, I think Mr. Whiteman uh, was quite right to uh, introduce the, the four drivers of fuel, fuel poverty in, into this bill. Um, there was a bit of a debate in committee over this, um, whether the Scottish Government actually had influence over all four. Um, I accept they don't have total influence over all four, but they do have some influence over all four. And so we'll be supporting uh, Mr. Whiteman. Um, as for my colleague, uh, Mr. Burnett, um, we obviously accept, as does Mr. Burnett, that uh, amendments 81 and 85 have been superseded by Mr. Whiteman's amendments. Uh, so Mr. Burnett is uh, not going to press those. Uh, but his amendment 83 inserts a requirement to report on the progress on removing low levels of energy efficiency as a driver of fuel poverty. And I think that 
makes perfect sense, as others have said. Um, we'll not be supporting the amendments from Claudia Beamish and Pauline McNeill. Um, I feel that uh, Pauline McNeill, unfortunately for her, has been caught up in uh, Ms. Beamish's legislative slipstream um, in that the, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> her, amend her amendments uh, are kind of tied in to Ms. Beamish's, and if, she, if she'd gone for something separate, uh, she might have had support. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Andy Whiteman to wind up on this whole group and to press or withdraw the Amendment 21 in his own name. Uh, thank you very much. I press Amendment 21 in, in my name. I don't have a great deal to say. It's the um, uh, serendipity often decides who opens and closes uh, groups. Uh, I just want to make some comments about Amendment 78 in the name of Claudia Beamish. Uh, I mean, the Minister said, and by his own logic, he said that the strategy already deals with all tenures, and therefore um, the fact that this misses agriculture and crofting shouldn't really matter um, at all. Um, and it is the case, of course, that you know, two identical homes, maybe in a terrace street, one with a family in fuel poverty and the other uh, not, will have very similar solutions uh, to improving energy efficiency. The strategy need not distinguish between fuel poor households and non fuel poor households, as in most, if not all cases, uh, the solutions uh, will be the same. And of course, they're vital for our carbon emissions. I do accept some of the Minister's critique uh, of 78, but nevertheless, I still think it's a useful uh, means by which to focus Minister's attention in future in the strategy uh, on particular tenures of housing. And just finally, I would like to thank Alexander Burnett for his kind comments. He will possibly go down in history as the Minister. Uh, sorry, the minister? No, the member. <laughs> he should be so lucky. Well, well he, may go, he may go down in history as a minister one day, but um, go down in history, uh, everyone's waiting with bated breath. As the member who moved the £60 million amendment uh, at stage two, I'm glad he secured a more modest amendment here today. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you very much, Mr Whiteman. And the question is that Amendment 21 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. I call Amendment 22 in the name of the Minister. Minister to move. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 22 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 72 in the name of Graeme Simpson. This was debated with Amendment 1. And I would remind members that if Amendment 72 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 73. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Move. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 72 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 74. 74, in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 21. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? On the basis of the Minister's commitments on the record, I'm happy not to move Amendment 74, 75 and 76, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Ms Bailey. Thank you much. Therefore, the next set of questions, I'm going to call amendments 23 to 28, all in the name of the Minister, and all previously debated with amendment 21. Hang on one second. Thank you. Um, does any member object? Sorry, can I ask the, um, the Minister to move amendments 23 to 28 on block? Moved on block, President Officer. Thank you. Does anyone object if we put the question on block? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. Uh, the question is that amendments 23 to 28 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 78 in the name of Claudia Beamish, already debated with amendment 21. Claudia Beamish to move or not move? Moved, Presiding Officer. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 78 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We're going to move to vote. This will be the first vote after a debate, therefore it will be a one-minute division. The question is that Amendment 78 be agreed to and members may cast their votes now.
The result of the vote on Amendment No. 78 in the name of Claudia Beamish is yes, 27, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 77 in the name of Alexander Burnett, already debated. Alexander Burnett to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 77 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members may cast their votes now. Amendment 77. The result of the vote on Amendment Number 77 in the name of Alexander Burnett is yes, 27, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 79 in the name of Pauline McNeill. Already debated. Pauline McNeill to move or not move? Not move. That is not moved. We turn now to Group 8, Strategy and Periodic Reports, Consultation and Revision. Can I call Amendment 29 in the name of the Minister? grouped with the amendments as shown in the groupings. The Minister to move Amendment 29 and to speak to all the amendments in this group. Thank you, President Officer. At stage two, uh, an amendment from Alec Rowley, MSP, was passed uh, obliging ministers to keep the fuel poverty strategy under review on an ongoing basis. In order for it to have real purpose, ministers also need to have the ability to actually revise that strategy whenever unforeseen changes are identified that have to be addressed, or respond to comments on the strategy from the new advisory panel, which the bill now establishes. At present, the wording does not explicitly give ministers this authority, so I have brought forward Amendment 29 to provide for that. I also said at stage two uh, that we might need to revise Mr Rowley's amendment slightly uh, from a technical perspective in order to ensure that they worked as everyone would want them to. At the moment, not all of the rules which apply to the strategy uh, would apply to a revised strategy. Uh, for example, the new statutory panel would not have the function of proposing changes to a revised strategy. In order to ensure that the bill is consistent in its treatment of both the fuel poverty strategy and any revised strategies, Amendment 30 applies a default rule to make sure that this is the case throughout sections 3, 4 and 5. Repeated references to a revised strategy uh, will not then be needed, so there are a number of tidying uh, amendments to remove those. Finally, in order to ensure that if a revised strategy is developed, there will always be a periodic report every three years. Uh, amendments 44 and 45 ensures the three yearly reporting cycle will not be recalculated as currently stage two amendments mean the reporting cycle would restart if the strategy is revised. Uh, turning now to Amendment 35, um, I thank Ms Bailey for working with me on a revision of her Stage 2 amendment on consulting specific groups on the preparation of the fuel poverty strategy, which at that time uh, we couldn't agree due to the wording. Uh, at Stage 2, Ms Bailey chose not to press this amendment uh, so we could discuss further. Her new amendment keeps to her policy proposal, whilst also being consistent with wording used elsewhere in the bill, uh, and I'm happy to support Ms Bailey's amendment. Finally, I'm also uh, happy that Alec Rowley and I have been able to work together on his amendments to expand and consolidate the statutory role of the Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel by making them a mandatory committee on uh, um, by making them a mandatory committee, uh, consultee sorry, on the periodic reports and the development uh, of the strategy. Uh, this is very important uh, in the fight to tackle fuel poverty in Scotland uh, and I'm happy to support them. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call Jackie Bailey to speak to Amendment 35 and the other amendments in this group. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. I rise to speak to Amendment 35 in my name. At stage two, as the Minister has already alluded to, I proposed an amendment that would have made sure the government had to involve a wide variety of people in preparing the fuel poverty strategy, specifically those who had lived experience of fuel poverty, who are disabled or suffering from a long-term illness, older people and those living in rural areas. These groups encompass some of the most vulnerable groups in our society, particularly when it comes to fuel poverty. So I believe it is crucial that they are brought into the process of developing policies to address the issue. The Scottish Government were supportive of the principle, but not the specific wording. So I withdrew that amendment with the view to bringing it back at stage three in a format we could all agree on. Having worked with the Minister on this amendment, it is consistent with the wording used elsewhere in the Bill. It will ensure the views of these crucial groups of people listed are taken into account when the Government develops its fuel poverty strategy. A duty to consult individuals who are living or have lived in fuel poverty is already included within the Bill. I hope, therefore, that members across the Chamber will support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Alec Rowley to speak to Amendment 80 and the other amendments in this group. Yeah, just happy to move the amendment, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Rowley. Uh, Minister, do you want to... Say very briefly, uh, President Officer, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Rowley and Ms. Bailey for working with me uh, in order to improve these sections of the bill. Uh, I cannot emphasise enough uh, the importance of being able to come together uh, to, discu uh, to uh, discuss improvements to the bill in between the stages of the bill in order to gain agreement and strengthen, uh, and this also strengthens the bill. So thanks to all members who have cooperated in these. Thank you very much. So the question is that Amendment 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 30 in the name of the Minister. Minister, to move formally. Uh, moved, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendment 31, Minister, to move formally? Thank you. The question is that Amendment 31 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 32 in the name of the Minister. Minister, to move formally. Uh, moved. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 33 in the name of Andy Whiteman. Already debated. Andy Whiteman, to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 34 in the name of the Minister, already debated with 29. Minister, to move formally. Uh, move, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 34 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 35 in the name of Jackie Bailey. Jackie Bailey, to move. Moved. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 80 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move. Move, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 80 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 36 to 41 in the name of the Minister. Can I invite the Minister to move the amendments on block? Moved on block. Thank you very much. Does anyone object to these questions being put on block? No. They don't. That's good. The question is that Amendments 36 to 41 are agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 81 in the name of Alexander Burnett. Alexander Burnett to move or not to move? Uh, not moved. That is not moved. The question is that Amendment... Sorry, I call Amendment 6 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated with, with Amendment 1. Uh, and I would remind members that if Amendment 6 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 82. Graeme Simpson to move or not move Amendment 6? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 6 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a debate, move to a vote, sorry. This is on Amendment 6. This is the first um, vote following a debate. Therefore, we'll have a one-minute division on Amendment 6.
The result of the vote on Amendment No. 6 in the name of Graeme Simpson is yes, 94, no, 21. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call Amendment 42 in the name of Andy Whiteman, already debated with Amendment 21. Andy Whiteman to move or not? Move. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 42 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 83 in the name of Alexander Burnett. Alexander Burnett to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 83 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 7 in the name of Graeme Simpson. This was debated with Amendment 1, and I would remind members that if this is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 84. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? That is moved. The question is that Amendment 7 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. This will be a 30-second division on Amendment 7 in the name of Graeme Simpson. The result of the vote on amendment number seven in the name of Graeme Simpson is yes, 93, no, 21. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. Amendment 84 is therefore preempted. I call amendment 85 in the name of Alexander Burnett. Alexander Burnett to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. I call amendment eight in the name of Graeme Simpson. And I would remind members that if amendment eight is agreed to, I cannot call amendment 86. James Simpson to move or not move Amendment 8? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 8 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on Amendment 8 in the name of Graeme Simpson is yes, 93, no, 20. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. Amendment 86 is therefore preempted. I call Amendment 43 in the name of Andy Whiteman. Andy Whiteman to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Thank you. I call Amendment 87 in the name of Pauline McNeill. Pauline McNeill to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. I call Amendment 9 in the name of Graeme Simpson. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Moved. Thank you. That is moved. And I call Amendment 9A in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 1A. Alec Rowley to move or not, not moved. moved? That is not moved. So the, yeah. so the question is that Amendment 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed, so we'll move to a vote. Members may cast their votes now. This is on Amendment 9 in the name of Graeme Simpson. The result of the vote on Amendment Number 9 in the name of Graeme Simpson is yes, 93, no, 20. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call Amendment 88 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. That is not moved. I call Amendment 44 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 29. Minister to move formally? 
Uh, moved, President Officer. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 44 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 45 in the name of the Minister. Minister to move. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 45 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 10 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated, and Graeme Simpson to move. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 10 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. And members may cast their votes now on Amendment 10. The result of the vote on amendment number 10 in the name of Graeme Simpson is yes, 94, no, 20. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 89 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with amendment Not moved. Eight. Not moved. I call amendment 46 in the name of the minister. Minister to move. Presiding Thank officer. you. The question is that amendment 46 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 47 in the name of Andy Whiteman. Andy Whiteman to move or not move? That is moved. The question is that Amendment 47 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 90 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move. And move, President Officer. That is not moved. moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 90 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 91 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move. Not moved. That is not moved. I call Amendment 92 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. That is not moved. I call Amendment 93 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. That is not moved. I call Amendment 94 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. I call Amendment 11 in the name of Graeme Simpson. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. I call Amendment 11A in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 1A. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. The question is that Amendment 11 in the name of Graeme Simpson. No. Oh, there's 11B. Yeah, sorry. I call Amendment 11B in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated. Not Alec moved. Alec to move. Okay, Alec Rowley not moving 11B. So the question is, oh no. I call Amendment 11C in the name of Alec Rowley, moved or not moved? F C through to F is not moved. Presiding. Not moved as well. I call Amendment 11D in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley, moved. not moved. Not moved. Not moved. I call Amendment. Yes. 11E. Not moved. 11F. Not moved. Not moved. So the question is that Amendment 11, unamended, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 95 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated. Alec Rowley to move. Moved. Up. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 95 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 12 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 12 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We turn now to Group 9, Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel. And I would start by calling Amendment 96 in the name of Alec Rowley, grouped with the amendments as shown in the groupings, and Alec Rowley to move the amendment and speak to all the amendments in this grouping. President Officer, I'm happy to move Amendment 96 and other amendments in my name. It is important that members of the Scottish Parliament out with the government have access to advice from the statutory panel in order to adequately scrutinise the impact of government policy and what further action needs to be taken to meet the target. We are supporting the government's amendments which increase the financial cap and place it over a three-year period. 
This is a sensible approach and the Parliament seems to agree that the panel should provide largely a scrutiny role. We are also supporting Andy Whiteman's amendment to allow for the cap to be increased. It is plausible that a future government might want to commission one of research that could uh, be co cost saving in the longer term. These amendments would allow for that and I move my amendment. Thank you very much, Mr Rowley. Can I call the Minister to speak to Amendment 48 and the other amendments in this group? Uh, thank you, President Officer. At stage two, I gave my support to Alec Rowley's amendment to establish a statutory Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel. Uh, I very much welcome the principle of a cap on, ex uh, on expenditure, uh, as I prefer we invested our resources on fuel poor households and not on administration. However, I did say his £20,000 cap may be too low uh, and committed the government to carry out the work to estimate the costs which the panel is likely to require in order to perform its functions effectively. Amended, Amendment 60 introduces a new three-yearly cost cap of £82,000 adjusted to reflect any percentage increase in the average uh, consumer price index. This is based on a similar size panel uh, to the existing non-statutory body uh, meeting four times a year. It also assumes a reasonable level of remuneration and appropriate staff and secretariat costs. Uh, we would be, believe it would be better uh, to provide for a multi-year cap on the panel's costs instead of a single year figure because it is likely that the workload of the panel uh, will vary from year to year. Uh, the first of these three-year periods will begin uh, with the commencement of this new section uh, and will continue on a rolling basis uh, thereafter. The amendments in this group also make a number of tweaks in relation to the power to set out regulations, uh, the details of precisely how the panel should be constituted and uh, its functions. At present, the drafting of Section 9A uh, does not provide sufficient flexibility to properly address all the possible issues that are likely to arise in setting up uh, and running a body like the panel. For example, to include the arrangements for appointing members and having the ability to make provision about things like the panel's legal status or amending other legislation, uh, which is not possible uh, as currently drafted. I'd like to turn to the other amendments in the group. Alec Rowley's Amendment 96 uh, proposes that the panel can provide advice to the relevant parliamentary committee. Uh, I think this will be helpful and the existing costing estimates are sufficient to cover this. However, in relation to uh, Mr Whiteman's uh, Amendment 60A, uh, I don't support the ability for ministers to change the budget cap. Our amendments on this provide for adequate funding uh, and we have future-proofed the level of funding uh, to take into account inflation. Uh, there's no need to revisit this and I'd be very concerned that, constraint, uh, that constant revision of this cap will simply push the cost up and up and reduce the focus and efficiency of the panel. I welcome the establishment of a statutory panel uh, and believe this approach will provide us with the expertise required while whilst offering us real value for money. Thank you very much. And I call Andy Whiteman to speak to Amendment 60A and the other amendments in this group. Well, thank you, Presiding Officer. I will just restrict my remarks to Amendment 60A uh, in my name. This uh, relates to the most important amendment, I think, that was moved at stage two, Alex Rowley's amendment, to establish um, a panel, Scottish Fuel Poverty a panel which should, one hopes, uh, together with the interim target and the periodic reporting and the scrutiny now embedded in the bill, uh, make sure, or at least make sure in as far as possible, uh, that the failure to meet previous targets and previous legislation uh, doesn't uh, come to pass. Uh, I'm a bit bemused by the Minister's objection to Amendment 60A. Um, what it does is simply give Ministers the power to make regulations to vary uh, the financial uh, cap provided um, that provides the uh, finances for the Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel. This bill sets a target out to 2040, which is 21 years away. There will be around four or five administrations uh, over that time. And it seems to me perfectly reasonable uh, that a future administration may wish to, to vary this. Um, and I don't understand why the Minister wishes to fetter their discretion in that regard. And it seems to be an eminently reasonable uh, provision. I see no reason to reject it, but uh, I guess it might well be rejected. I'm no idea. So I, uh, I have to move the amendment, I think. Do I? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Annabel Ewing. 
The presiding officer, I rise to speak against Amendment 60A. At stage two, I was pleased to support the proposal to put the Scottish Field Poverty Advisory Panel on a statutory footing. However, at that time, I did raise concerns that by doing so, uh, we did not use up scarce resources in administration and bureaucracy, but rather ensured uh, that the focus remain on uh, resources for the front line. The issue of a cap was raised indeed at stage two, and as the minister has said, he undertook to reflect on what would be a reasonable uh, figure, both to allow the body to function in accordance with its remit, whilst taking into account the need not to divert resource from the front line. That work has been done, and I'm happy to support, support Amendment 60 in the name of the minister. In conclusion, I do note that at stage two, Mr Whiteman himself supported a cap approach on the basis that, and I quote, I am not a supporter of setting up a bureaucratic organisation using lots of resources. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I call uh, Alec Rowley to wind up, if he wishes to, and to press or withdraw Amendment 96 in his name. Okay, press. Oh, Sorry, Mr Rowley, Lee MacArthur's just pressed, so I'll take Lee MacArthur. Beg your pardon. Thank you very much, uh, President Office. I'd rise to support um, the approach taken by Andy Whiteman in his amendment. As far as I can see, it's an enabling provision that would allow um, ministers to come forward uh, by regulation. It would, uh, I think, be scrutinised by, by future parliaments who uh, would be cognisant of the, uh, the need to avoid uh, resources being inappropriately diverted, diverted away from the front line. So I see no real risk in, in this provision uh, at, at all and therefore will be supporting it. Thank you. And I note that Graeme Simpson now wishes to speak. Graeme Simpson. <laughs> um, yes, thanks, presiding officer. I find it um, unusual that we have a minister who uh, does not want to take powers. Um, and I suppose he's to be commended for that. Um, and uh, you know, he, he has, in, in Amendment 60, already uh, increased the budget for the panel. Uh, that is uh, inflation-proofed, and I think that goes far enough. So we'll be supporting Amendment 60, but not 60A. And Alec Rowley, to uh, wind up in the group and to press or uh, withdraw Amendment 96. Yeah, we'll be supporting every amendment, including Andy Whiteman's, I think for the, the reasons that both he and Liam MacArthur set out, uh, and uh, I would press. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 96 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendments 48 to 59, all in the name of the Minister? Minister, to move the amendments on block? Moved on block, President. Thank you. Does any member object to me putting the question on these amendments on block? That is good. The question is that amendments 48 to 59 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 97 in the name of Alec Rowley. This was debated with amendment 21. No, sir. This is moved. The question is that amendment 97 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call amendment 60 in the name of the minister? This was debated with amendment 96. Minister to move? Moved. That is moved. Can I call Amendment 60A in the name of Andy Whiteman? Andy Whiteman to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. So the question is that Amendment 60A be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We'll move to a division, and this will be a one-minute division, as it is the first vote following a debate. So a one-minute division on Amendment 60A. Amendment, members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 60A in the name of Andy Whiteman is yes, 31, no, 83. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed.
Uh, the Minister to press or withdraw Amendment 60? I assume to press. The question is that Amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. I call Amendment 99 in the name of Claudia Beamish. This was the manuscript amendment already debated with Amendment 21. Claudia Beamish to move or not move? Not moved, Presiding Officer. Not moved. I call Amendment 61 in the name of the Minister. Minister to move. Uh, moved, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 61 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 62, Minister to move. Thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 62 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Amendment 13 in the name of Graeme Simpson? Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 14 in the name of Graeme Simpson. Already debated. Graeme Simpson to move? Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 14 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 98 in the name of Alec Rowley. Alec, Alec Rowley to move or not move? Move, President Officer. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 98 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Group 10, commencement. I call Amendment 64 in the name of Andy Whiteman. In a group of its own, Andy Whiteman to, to move and speak to Amendment 64. Thanks, Presiding Officer. I move Amendment 64, possibly the most exciting amendment <laughs> we'll be debating today. Um, appeals, appeals to the inner geek in me, but seriously, since I arrived in this place, I have noted the importance of commencement provisions uh, in bills, uh, particularly when the government is in a minority, uh, sometimes used, I think, to frustrate opposition uh, amendments. So I've taken to keeping a close eye on this section. I moved an amendment at stage two, which the Minister, I think, correctly uh, suggested was inappropriate to commence the whole act uh, at once. So I went through it with a, uh, a fine tooth comb. And it's interesting that we now arrive at a position where the fuel poverty definition, targets definition strategy Scotland bill, um, the day after royal assent, uh, three sections will come into force. Section 12A, the exciting section called interpretation about the meaning of the fuel poverty targets. Section 13, the commencement section itself has to come into force to enable us to commence the commencement section. Uh, and section 14, which is the most exciting section of the bill, uh, which describes the short title um, of the Act. Now, given that um, uh, Section 12A is to be commenced on the day after Royal Assent, and it is the interpretation of the terms used in Section 1 and 1A, and given that Section 1A uh, merely introduces the principal uh, measures in this bill, namely a 2040 target and a 2030 target, I fail to see why uh, the provisions in Section 1 and 1A should not come into force the day after Royal Assent. I understand the Minister takes a different view. Uh, that's fine, but uh, uh, there's my thoughts for what it's worth, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Well, thank you. Minister, before I call you, Mr Dornan wishes to speak. James Dornan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, as Mr Whiteman quite rightly said, he, he had mentioned this at Stage 2, and I thought that the response that was, he was given to by the minister explained quite clearly why that couldn't be why it couldn't be done and i mean for example you, he said himself that mr stewart correctly draws attention to sections two three four and five which cannot come into force the day after royal assent also for example the government needing to commence section two then bring forward regulations in relation to enhanced heating and the additional uplift for remote rural areas etc would all have to be done after that so i don't believe that the two of them could be done the day after it Yes. Thank you. Andy Whiteman. I thank the member for taking intervention. I entirely accept what he says, um, but I'm not seeking to commence Section 2 or any of the subsequent sections. It's just 1 and 1A, so I'd be interested in the member's views as to why on earth 1 and 1A cannot be brought into force immediately after Royal Assent. James Dornan. I think it's important that we, we work on the basis that we've got, that there was, a, there was agreement in the committee on, and I don't really understand the push for... It's not common for the next day for, for all the parts of the bill to be commenced, and I just don't understand why it's necessary in this. And to be fair, I am the anti-geek, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> so so, so I, th I think we are, uh, we're fighting from opposite corners here. And I call the Minister. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, during stage two, um, I assured the committee that the Scottish Government has no intention of causing any delay uh, to the commencement of the Bill's provisions. Once the Bill becomes an Act, 
uh, my intention would be to implement uh, its substantive provisions as soon as is reasonably pract practicable. This means that section 13 of the bill, which commences the interpretation, commencement and short title sections, will come into force on the day after royal assent, with the other provisions to be commenced by regulations. Amendment 64 uh, from Mr Whiteman would commence the section setting out the 2040 and 2030 targets on the day after royal assent, before we have a working definition of fuel poverty. This is not practical or sensible. Uh, because of the need to establish uh, the final detail of the definition, there is a logical order to the commencement of the sections. For example, uh, we need to commence section two, then bring forward regulations in relation to enhanced heating and the additional uplift for remote rural areas, remote small towns and our island uh, communities. Uh, we went through this at stage two uh, when Mr Whiteman brought forward similar amendments. At the time he withdrew the amendment uh, because he accepted we cannot commence the definition of fuel poverty yet and if we cannot do that, that then it does not make sense to commence the targets on fuel poverty which rely on that definition. It is our intention uh, to commence the sections setting out the targets at the same time as the definition of fuel poverty comes into force through regulations and we intend for this to be done uh, before the end of this year. I would urge Mr Whiteman uh, not to press his amendment. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call on Andy Whiteman to wind up in this group if he wishes to add anything or just simply to press or withdraw his amendment. Uh, thank you, President. Officer. I won't detain members for much longer. There are more important arguments to be had in this place, uh, but I will be pressing the amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the question is that Amendment 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote and members may cast their votes now. And this will be a one minute division. The result of the vote on amendment number 64 in the name of Andy Whiteman is yes 27, no 87. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. And that concludes consideration of amendments. Now, as members may be aware, at this point in proceedings, I'm required under standing orders to decide whether or not any provision in this bill uh, relates to a protected subject matter, matter. That is, whether it affects the franchise or modifies the electoral system for Scottish parliamentary elections. In my view, it does not. Therefore, it does not require a supermajority at stage three. As members may also be aware, we've decided to move stage three to Tuesday afternoon. So there are no further questions to be put as a result of today's business. So I close this meeting.